First general question, how's the business doing here in Hong Kong? At Tesla, we're, we're super appreciative of, uh, of Hong Kong. Um, it's uh, it's the, the city, I believe at this point, the most number of Teslas per capita. Yeah. So, so the, it, I think it's, it's sort of a, it's a very exciting, I think, model in Hong Kong because I think Hong Kong will have, over time, the highest percentage of electric vehicles of any city in the world and it can therefore serve as a model uh, for how other um, high density cities around the world can transform to a sustainable transport future. So I think, um, I think that's, that's very exciting. So we plan to work closely with the, the Hong Kong government and to take lessons learned and see what we can do to then propagate that to cities around the world. We're very excited about the partnership with, with Hong Kong. Yeah, and because Hong Kong is such a densely packed city, there's no range anxiety in Hong Kong, but that's not the only factor behind the popularity of the Tesla. What are the other factors? Um, sure. Well, certainly range not being an issue is, is, is one factor. Uh, although that is counterbalanced by uh, challenges with charging. Yeah. Um, so one of the, the things that we need to work through, and this is a, a challenge that any other uh, dense city in the world has, is um, as you have more and more electric vehicles on the roads, you have to find some place to, to charge them. And the ideal place to charge the car is at uh, your home or or office, essentially the same place that you charge your phone. But, th but this is challenging because a lot of apartment buildings, well, most apartment buildings didn't anticipate um, having that level of power in the garage. And sometimes the parking spot float around, they're not consistent. So it's gonna be quite important to um, get, get the power to the buildings that need it. Mm. Um, and then and figure out a, a good and convenient way for people to charge at home. Um, we are deploying a lot of superchargers, and of course that's, that's going to be important, but it, those are really meant for when you um, ha have an unusually long trip and you've been away from your home or office for a while, or, or you need to top up and you're out and about. But by far the most convenient is home or office charging, and that's mm. the thing that we're really working closely with the uh, Hong Kong government on. Yeah. Hey, we were talking about this earlier, about the impact of falling oil prices, because high oil prices was a major selling point for getting into hybrids or electric vehicles. Right. Now that oil prices are in free fall, what does that mean for the industry? Well, it, it definitely makes the transition to sustainable energy more difficult. Yeah. Um, and I think no, no doubt that that is going to uh, dampen interest in electric vehicles in general. With our cars, what, we're, what, we're, what we aspire to do is to make the car so compelling um, that even with low gasoline prices, it's still the car you want to buy. Yeah. Um, I, that's, I mean, the only thing I can think of. To, yeah. to, that's the only sort of well, have, what else we could do, really. You have to yeah. make it compelling. So, yes, exactly. And, and this is really at the key of Tesla, is to create an electric car that's not worthy, it's going to help the environment, but it is a car that you will covet, that you want to drive, that yeah. happens to be very good for the climate change, or very good, very good for um, the environment. Yeah, exactly. And I think this is sort of general... Um, you know, ad advice I'd give to people starting companies, to entrepreneurs in general, is um, r really focus on making a product that your customers love. Yeah. And it, it's so rare that you can buy a product and, and you love the product when you, when you bought it. The, this, is, this is, there are very few things that fit into that category. And if you, if you can come up with something like that, your, your business will be successful for sure. Let's talk about China. Mm -hmm. um, China is the world's largest auto market. Um, China is also, it's a growing electric vehicle market too. It's soon to be the world's largest there. Um, world's largest carbon emitter. We've seen the return of the so-called air apocalypse and crazy bad air days in places like Shenyang and Beijing, especially during the winter time. China needs your technology. Is China really aware of that? Do you get that sense? And if you don't mind, if you could hold the mic a little bit it's, closer. Sorry, yeah, that, absolutely. Please. China is definitely aware of, of Tesla. I've had a number of uh, high-level meetings with uh, the Chinese government. Um, and in fact, um, the, the Minister of Finance uh, recently mentioned Tesla in a speech that he gave. Oh, wow. Um, as, as a good example, yeah. actually. He, he's, so he's, he's, um, he likes what we're doing. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Which is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and then last year, we, uh, in, in, in an effort to help the rest of industry and just sort of um, kind of be, be a good, good neighbor, we uh, open sourced all of our patents. Um, so any company in China or elsewhere can use uh, our patents to uh, create electric vehicles. Oh, wow. So. wow. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing there just really underscores a theme that emerged at the latest um, climate change conference in Paris, the debate on whether developed countries should be doing more to help developing countries when the goal is Absolutely. a general shared goal. And you're saying a, a, a company from a developed country should be doing that little bit more 
in a market like China. Uh, I, I agree, although, quite frankly, I think China is quite, quite well it's developed. Quite developed. I mean, yeah. you know, <laughs> let me tell you, China has better highways and, and definitely better trains than the United States. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> By far, okay. <laughs> um, so, um, in fact, I had a great experience taking the, the bullet train from Beijing to Xi'an to see the Terracotta oh, Warriors. Cool. Yeah. Oh, that was, it was an, a great experience. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think uh, th th there's a lot of, lot of opportunity there. I think the, the, the challenge for Tesla is that um, w if, in, in China we, we need to establish sort of a local partnership. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to kind of figure that out. There is the issue of pollution in China, the need for sustainable energy solutions in China. Gridlock is a huge issue in places like Beijing. I don't know if you've been stuck in Beijing traffic. I've been yeah. stuck in Beijing. Yeah, it's it's, pretty crazy. we've all, everyone here who's yeah. traveled to China, you're stuck in, it's pretty mm -hmm. crazy. Can Tesla Autopilot provide some sort of a solution to that? Well, uh, I, I, think, I think Autopilot can certainly take the edge off. Um, <laughs> um, because the, 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 um, our autopilot capability right now is really good um, in, in two scenarios. Either we're on a, on a highway where there's no traffic and the lines are, are, are quite clear, yeah. um, or, or in heavy traffic. So it's super good in heavy traffic. Uh, not, not that I'd recommend it, but you know you can read a book or do email. That's <laughs> what I found. So, so you can really take the edge off the traffic. But um, I, I'm actually quite a big fan of tunnels. Uh, tunnels are so underappreciated. Uh, uh, please, <laughs> please elaborate. <laughs> the fundamental problem with cities is that we build cities in 3D. Yeah. I mean, you see, you've got these tall buildings with lots of people on each floor, but then you've got roads which are 2D. Yeah. Um, so that, that obviously just doesn't work. You're, you're guaranteed to have gridlock. But you can go 3D if you have tunnels. Mm. Um, and you can have many tunnels crisscrossing each other with maybe a few meters vertical distance between them mm. um, and, and, and completely get rid of traffic problems. Mm. Um, and it's my understanding that actually Hong Kong is in the process of building uh, some tunnels. Mm. And I was very pleased to hear that. That, that really is the solution um, for solving traffic in major cities. Yeah, you can also go 3D with flying cars. You can. Yeah. But that's not going to happen for a long time. Well, I mean, flying cars uh, sound cool, but then uh, they do make a lot of wind, yeah. and um. they're kind of noisy. And You've thought this out. The probability of something falling on your head is much higher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotcha. We talked about charging stations and the challenge for rolling out more charging stations in Hong Kong. The challenge is exponentially greater in China, especially in the rural areas to connect the big cities. What, what are your plans on, on that? So we actually have a supercharging network uh, yeah. uh, throughout China. You can go, at this point, almost anywhere in, in China yeah. um, uh, using the Tesla supercharger network. And then we've got, um, so, uh, there's a whole bunch of third-party uh, affiliate destination chargers. And we've actually had people drive uh, all the way from uh, Beijing to Tibet. Yeah. So it's a... Uh, wow. Yeah, in a, in a Model S. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Have you driven a Tesla in rural China? Um, no. No, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Other people have. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Model 3. What can you tell us about the Model 3, what it's going to look like? And I know that y you've mentioned to me about... <laughs> it, sorry. No, no, sorry. I, I, yeah, I, yeah I, can't, I can't tell you what it's going to look like. Okay, but, okay. Um, but, I mean, I can tell you just generally some characteristics about it, which is it's meant to be um, a slightly smaller version, sort of a smaller version of the Model S. Yeah. Um, and it won't have quite as many bells and whistles, but it'll be at a much lower price point. Yep. Um, so the intent is to r roughly get the, cut the price in half for, uh, for a smaller vehicle. And, um, and, and I think really that's going to be uh, probably the most profound car that we, we make, because that, that'll, that, that'll be, a, I think, a very compelling car at an affordable price. Yeah, the, this yeah. is with the Model 3, the electric vehicle could go fully mainstream. Yeah. Um, other um, car manufacturers, we have GM in mind with the Bolt doing the same thing. And you welcome your rivals doing this. Right. The goal of Tesla from the beginning has been to accelerate the advent of sustainable transport. So mm -hmm. um, we, we, uh, we actually did some partnerships. We did one with Mercedes and one with uh, Toyota, you know, open source IP and everything. So um, the, the whole purpose of, of it was really to accelerate the advent of sustainable transport. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, it's always great to hear when other car companies are making electric cars. Yeah, including car companies inside China. Yeah, um, absolutely. Are there any Chinese electric car vehicle uh, makers that, that are capturing your attention? or? Uh, well, we, we don't think too much about uh, what, what competitors are doing. Yeah. Um, just w because I think it's important to um, 
be just focused on making the best possible uh, products. Maybe analogous to what they say about you know if you're in a in a if you if you're in a in a race, yeah. um, it's a, don't worry about what how the other what the other runners are doing. Yeah. Just run. Yeah. <laughs> but you know to to push that metaphor even more. Are you afraid that whoever's hosting the race could tilt the race in favor of <laughs> the Chinese racer? I'm trying to figure out if there's any way to answer that question and not lose. Uh, <laughs> you, you get one pass okay, during you. this interview. If you'd like to take the pass, okay. you could take I'll, that I'll pass. Pass with that one. Okay. <laughs> Um, we, we've talked about innovation in China, and I, I thought your answer was really interesting, and it'd be cool to share it with the audience here. What was, what is the example of made in China innovation that you thought, wow, that's pretty cool? Uh, well, I think actually um, a lot of the, the social media uh, services in China, um, uh, you know, Weibo, WeChat, uh, pretty impressive. I think better than what is available in the U.S. Yeah. Um, Are you on WeChat? I am actually. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, I only use WeChat when I'm in mainland China on business. Yeah. Do you use WeChat in LA and Silicon Valley? Um, occasionally to correspond with people in China. Okay, yeah, yeah. See? that's it. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's, it's pretty good. Um, and which, um, what, what, I think Alibaba is pretty impressive as well. Alibaba is pretty, do you use Alibaba? Have you uh, no. used, <laughs> you purchased? I've heard impressive things about it. Yeah, yeah, it is yeah. very, very impressive, yeah. yeah. Um, WeChat, how do you use it? Which messaging functions do you like to use on it? Well, I, I wouldn't call, call myself sort of a, a, a WeChat expert. Yeah. Um, I, I basically just message people. Yeah. And, and <laughs> <laughs> Got send it. pictures, okay. pictures Got and it. text. Got it. Can now, you do other things? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, now, recently, um, I, I did a panel discussion in Beijing with a group of technologists, and the subject came up, or, or I brought up the question, can there be an Elon Musk in China? And the answer was no. And it was being because of, and this is according to Kai Fu Li, a uh, former head of Google China who started Microsoft Research in Beijing, and he said it's because of the education system in China. It, it emphasizes too much rote learning. You are Elon Musk. Um, do you, what, what do you make of that? I mean, do you, do you agree with that? Well, I, I actually, um, I mean, obviously are a number of very successful uh, entrepreneurs in China. Yeah, Jack Ma, Pony Ma, that's yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I think uh, I'm not sure I would entirely agree with that, um, yeah. but 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 it is generally true that um, you know, innovation comes from questioning the way things have been done before. Yeah. Um, and if in the education system you're, you're taught not to do that, that will inhibit uh, entrepreneurship. Being able to question what you're being taught, being able to. Yeah, I yeah. mean, just uh, you know, saying, well, is there a better way? Yeah. Um, you know, to ask that question. Yeah. Um, let's talk about innovation at Tesla. A few more questions there. Um, so we, we talked about Tesla Autopilot. There's also Tesla Summon, and I love that name, the Summon, <laughs> where right. you summon the Tesla with your uh, mobile phone. Um, and, you know, we, we did talk about this earlier. I know that the, there's a big gap between those two programs and self-driving cars, but is Tesla on its way to a driverless model? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the whole industry ultimately will be producing autonomous cars. And if you went, if you fast forward, let's say 10 or, or certainly not more than 15 years, I think almost all cars produced will be autonomous. All cars produced will be autonomous. But all new cars, yes. But that's yeah. not the same as all cars on the road, because yeah. th there's roughly 2 billion cars and trucks on the road, yeah. um, and uh, just under 100 million produced every year. Um, so, it's, so the production rate is only 5% of the, of the fleet size. But if you say of new cars produced, um, I'd be surprised if a majority of them are not self-driving in, let's say, 10 to 15 years. And of all those uh, new self-driving cars out on the road, how many of them will have, will have a steering wheel? versus not having a steering wheel. You know, just a remnant of the past, right? Sure. Uh, the steering wheel thing, I'm not sure about. I mean, there may be some, perhaps, auxiliary steering wheel yeah. that um, only pops out, you know, when they, you need to take manual control for whatever reason. Probably if you go long, long term, my guess is there, there isn't uh, a steering wheel in most cars. It would be something that you would have to special order or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> In, in most cars, not all cars. And I, I, I do want to be clear, like, predictions are not endorsements. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, so it's, I'm not saying that this would be a good or a bad thing. Yeah. I'm just saying that this is probably what will occur. This is pattern recognition and anticipating what's going to happen next. It's, it's likely. I mean, I think it's sort of like elevators used to have a manual elevator operator. Yep. And you'd have somebody would be sort of moving the lever and be able to do fine-tune adjustments yep. um, with the elevator for each floor. 
Um, now there's no manual controller for elevators. Yeah. I think it, it's going to seem the same way for cars. Yeah. And how about the way consumers interact with driverless cars? How many consumers will choose to own their own car versus signing into a networked fleet of driverless cars? I think probably still most people will own their own car, but the, 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 there will be, a, I, it's hard to predict the exact percentage, but I mean, I, I think probably roughly 60, 70% of people will probably want to own their cars. And, um, We'll call it two-thirds own, one-third share. Uh, uh, this is a complete, uh, <laughs> you know, shooting in the dark guess. But yeah. um, I, I think still most people will want to own their own car. But they also may, may choose to add it to the shared fleet and then take it out of the shared fleet at will. Yeah. And you don't see that as a threat to your business model? No, I think just as long as we make uh, great autonomous cars. It's just uh, additional options for the consumer. Yeah. It, it's just adding functionality that I think people will consider quite important in a car in the future. I mean, I've said this before, but I think in the long term, owning a car that does not have autonomous capability will be like a bit like owning a horse. Yeah. I mean, you sort of own a horse for sentimental reasons, but not, uh, but, you know, but not, yeah. not, not for actual transport. Yeah. Let's talk about the futuristic looking Model X. And a question that many Hong Kongers have is, can I park this thing in my parking garage? because of those falcon wing doors. What's your answer to that? Yeah, actually the falcon wing doors um, are double hinged. Yeah. Um, so we should call them falcon wing instead of gull wing um, because they have a, a dual acting hinge. So they're actually, they can open, open in a tighter space than almost any door. And yeah. certainly more than a conventional, a tighter space than a conventional door. If you can physically fit between your car and a Model X, then you'll be able to get in the falcon wing door. Yeah, and it looks beautiful. I love the I mentioned this again when we talked yesterday. I, I love the Back to the Future series. It reminds me of the DeLorean, which I know I should not compare Tesla <laughs> to. Um, you know, it looks sci-fi, it looks cool, but it also, and this is important, it serves a design purpose. What is that purpose? Yeah, so the Bugwing door is designed to um, improve accessibility of the third row. I mean, typically in a three-row a three row car in an SUV, it's quite difficult to access the third row. Uh, directly. Um, you have to fold up the second row seats uh, and it, you really somehow have to move the seat back of, of the second row, um, which if you've got sort of a child or child seat in the second row can make it really inconvenient to access the third row. By having the falcon wing door, we have a much bigger opening that allows you to directly step to the third row um, quite conveniently, even if, 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 the, if there are baby seats in the second row. Um, and then um, if you're a mother, putting your child in the child seat in the second row is very easy um, because the, 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 you have such a big opening. Yeah. Um, and you can, you can step into the car and put the child into the child seat instead of cantilevering um, your child over sort of the, the, you know, through a hole over the baby seat sort of armrests. It's meant to, to improve accessibility and there are really only two ways to, to achieve that level of accessibility. One is the, is the sliding door of a minivan and the other is to have something like a falcon wing door. And the reason we didn't go for a sliding door for like, like a minivan is that it, it fundamentally constrains the aesthetics of the exterior of the car. Um, and you have to have three support rails, uh, which also negatively affect the aesthetics. And that's why all minivans pretty much look the same. And we, and we want to, and we were, so we want to have something was, that had that level of accessibility and actually has greater accessibility than a minivan door, but also looks good. This is classic user-centered design. And can I just say, thank you for designing for moms. Absolutely. And thank you for designing for parents. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think, I think uh, parents will, will really, really enjoy the, the, the Model X. Yeah. And we're, we're also taking good feed, you know, feedback from uh, customers. Um, and, uh, for example, one of the things that was asked of some of our Hong Kong customers that have ordered the Model X is to have a partial, a partial open function of the, of the Falcon Wing door. So if, you're, if, it's, a, if it's really heavy rain... Oh, yeah, um, so it's like an, an umbrella or... Yeah, so you, you'd want sort of a, maybe a 50-60% open uh, level, <laughs> um, so you have a good shield from, from the rain. Yeah. Um, and um, I think people will be pleased to know that it actually is already in the works. Oh, very good. Yeah. Very cool. Just Very a software cool. update. And something that is also potentially in the works, but only for a select few, a submersible Tesla. <laughs> that, that'll be n not anytime soon, but, but uh, yeah, that, that's just sort of to be a fun, fun side project to have a submers submersible Tesla. But I think the market for submarine cars is quite small. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have to use the uh, Cross Harbor Tunnel in Hong Kong. You could just go through the Victoria Harbor. Uh, that, that's true. That'd be pretty epic. You could just drive right off the <laughs> yeah. ramp, right off the edge of the, That's the, right. the, the pier. Be James Bond every day yeah. on your commute. Absolutely. Um, a Tesla truck, could that ever happen? 
Um, yeah, I think it's quite likely we'll do a truck in the future. Any more details in that? <laughs> no. no, I think it's sort of a logical thing um, for us to do in the future. Okay. Now, with Tesla, your goal has been to make a better car, and you've done that with an electric vehicle that people covet, that has quite a cult following, um, that's upgradable, but you also want to achieve, and your turn of phrase is very nice, um, or, or try to achieve this platonic ideal of a car, right, to reach um, yeah. perfection. So what does the perfect car look like? Well, I mean, I do, I do use that phrase with our engineering design team that aspirationally um, we're in pursuit of the platonic ideal of the perfect car. I mean, who knows what that looks like actually, but it's, I, you, you want to try to make every element of the car as, as flawless as possible. Um, now, there will always be, you know, some um, degree of imperfection, but try to minimize that um, and, and create a car that is just delightful in every way. And I think if you do that, then the, the rest kind of takes care of itself.